two loan deals completed, one player recalled. Also, what's going on with the Johnson Clark Harris situation? All this discussed in today's video. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of the Charlton Transfer Roundup Show, January edition. This is episode two and today we have got quite a bit to get for a few rumours. Two loan deals coming in, obviously Tedich being recalled. We're going to give updates on Johnson Clark Harris and the Macaulay Gillespie situations as well. Those are on the list for today. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe. We have hit 900 subscribers now, so the new goal is one. 1k subscribers by the end of February. I think it's doable. Let's see if we can. So if you are new around here or you want to share this with friends or family, please, please don't be afraid to. Anyways, let's get on with the video. To begin with then, Slobodan Tedic has been recalled by Man City. It was one that we definitely expected. It's a player that just hasn't worked out for us whatsoever. He didn't really show any talent in this time, scored two goals in 17 appearances and didn't really have much impact um, across his time at the club. I wish him all the best for the future, wherever he ends up. Now let's move on to the two loan signings coming in then. To begin with, Tyreek Backinson comes in on loan from Sheffield Wednesday. The midfielder obviously wasn't really playing too much for Sheffield Wednesday. He didn't really break into the championship and definitely not in Danny Roll's plans either. His contract expires in the summer, so in a way I think this was not to pay the fee now. Get him on loan, see how he does for us and whether it'd be worth investing in him as a free agent in the summer. Um, I've been quite lucky to see Tyreek Backinson a few times last season. My, my girlfriend's a Sheffield Wednesday fan, so I have been to a few of their games last season um, when Charlton haven't been playing. So I've been to I went to their playoff semi-final, semi-final. Um, I went to a couple of games during the season as well. And to be honest, he's not a player that stands out, but his presence is something that other midfielders don't have. You know, he's tall. Um, in a way, you can think of him as like a Kamara type of player. Um, he is an engine. He will just, he'll get in the box for you as well. He's he's tall. He obviously scored against us um, for Sheffield Wednesday. I think it was, was it last season? Back in the last season, I think it was the start of the season, we lost 1-0. Um, and he did score in that game with a header, which which was a game that we pretty much dominated, but just couldn't um, find the goal. And he came on and had that aerial presence that Wednesday were missing. And he that is the sort of player he is. It's just the presence in midfield's different to the normal persona of a midfielder, which is why I think he'll be quite a comfortable signing for us. One that we are lacking, obviously, with Kamara out injured. We don't have that tall midfielder in there who's going to be physical in there, but also win the aerial battles as well. And I think Backinson could be that player that could come in and improve that midfield straight away. I could probably see him starting on Saturday against Peterborough, um, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I would love to see him start maybe with Louis Watson and Dobson in that midfield. I think that would be quite a comfortable free in the middle. The next loan signing then, Lewis Farini on loan from Manchester City. We know how the last loan from Manchester City worked out, but this one looks a little bit better. Obviously, Farini has been out injured for quite um, quite long term, but he has worked with Appleton before. He's been with him at Lincoln. He's been with him at Blackpool. And Appleton's a big admirer of the player and he describes him as a player who can play on the half turn. That is something that we're missing in the middle. Um, and I think this could be quite a solid signing for us. Um, obviously, with one that you would you would think um, City aren't probably going to need. So it's one that if he does well, we could potentially bring in on, um, not on a freeze, contract doesn't expire, but potentially on a transfer fee in the summer if he is good enough. Um, and I think it will take a little bit of easing in, obviously, with the injury situation, which is a little bit frustrating when you're bringing someone in on loan. But with that, option to buy it's not an option to buy but the opportunity to buy him in the summer i think it could be quite a comfortable signing for us one that's not too big of a risk um you know we have got good midfielders in there as cover and lewis freeney just comes in and take uh helps that and even it takes him a month to get up to speed and then he starts playing and you know he's he's comfortable in that in that role so it'd be interesting to see how he gets on how long it actually does take him to get up to speed before we take a look back on updates from last week's episode, there's a new rumour that has been circulating a little bit. Greg 
Doherty from Hull City, another midfielder to be looking at, which does suggest to me that Dobson could be on his way out eventually. Um, but Greg Doherty hasn't played too much for Hull this season. He's featured 10 times, all coming off the bench. He did have one injury at the start of the season. That's the only injury he's had in his career, bar one that kept him out a month as well. Um, apart from that, it looks like... It could be quite a good signing for us. Um, obviously, it's another one that would need to get up to speed a little bit, um, having not played any 90 minutes this season. It, that's where we're at, though. And I think we have to understand that these players coming in, we're not going to be able to sign the best of the best. You know, the only one that really could be that is Johnson Clark Harris, who we will give a little update on in a little while. It's a bit more of a positive update, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it's a comfortable signing. As I said, he hasn't played too much for them but neither has Lewis Freeney hasn't kicked a ball in ages um back in some, so maybe you could argue that we need a player that is up to speed straight away would he be up to speed straight away we don't know it could just be that he's out of favor at Hull um I think the last game he played 50 minutes so potentially they're just easing him back in which is interesting because he did finish his injury sort of end of September start of October time he came back so maybe it's one that's gonna could potentially be reoccurring which would be a typical Charlton Athletic signing. Um, but hopefully not. Greg Doherty is the rumour of the week, though. Now, there's three players I would like to give a little update on from last week's episode, and that is Johnson Clark Harris, Macaulay Gillespie, and Connor Coventry. What's actually happening with those three deals? Obviously, we're a little bit more advanced with Johnson Clark Harris and Macaulay Gillespie, so I'll leave those for now. But Connor Coventry looks like there has been interest from elsewhere. Sheffield Wednesday now look like they could be leading the race for the 23-year-old. It would be obviously a very good sign. I did mention about him last week. So if you want to know a little bit more about him, then check out last week's episode. Link will be in the description to that one. But it looks like it could be quite a comfortable signing for us, but I don't think it's going to happen now. It's not one that I'm going to throw my toys at the Pram app um, because obviously it would have been an excellent signing. It would have been one that probably would have been our Dobbo replacement if Dobbo was to leave. Um, but it does look like he's going to go to a championship club and any young player is going to do that. Um, any player is probably going to do that. If they're going to have championship interest, you're going to be more interested in going to the championship, even if that club's obviously Sheffield Wednesday in a relegation battle, potentially looking like they could stay up in the current form that they're in. Though I think in the form table, they're looking at playoffs. So that sort of shows where they're at at the moment under their new manager. So it could be quite a good signing for him and probably better for his future um, than to come down here and be stuck in mid table in league one currently. Um, and that that's the reality of where we are at the moment. We're not going to be able to battle with a Sheffield Wednesday, potentially if we were in a playoff spot um, and we were able to offer slightly more money. And I think we probably would be able to in the Sheffield Wednesday in their current situation Then potentially we could have persuaded him, but I don't think we can when we're this low in league one. Macaulay Gillespie then there's no in, indications that he has failed his medical there's not many updates on him obviously he was seen at the valley apparently a six-figure fee had been agreed whether it's down to player terms and that's what's taking a little while and obviously with these signings that probably are going to upgrade the team quite a bit obviously with him and johnson clark harris i think they're going to take a little bit more time obviously we're going to be um you know contracts need to be negotiated at their ages as well they're both sort of reaching their prime so they want a big payout to finish their careers. So I think it could take a little while. I think it will potentially be one that goes towards the end of the window. It's the same with Johnson Clark Harris as well when I mentioned him in a second. But there's no indications that he's failed his medical. I think that was just some rumour that someone's decided to make up um, because nothing's happening. So they're just assuming things. But apart from that, I don't think anything, there's not many updates on him. Um, we'll see whether he's at the Valley again. Um, I'm sure if he was at the Valley, then he was probably turned down by the reaction of the fan base after that game. So, so let's see what happens with that one. Johnson Clark Harris then, a 450000 to 500000 transfer fee has been agreed. That's sort of what the rumours are. It's around that sort of fee, somewhere between that, probably closer to the £500,000 fee. Now, obviously, it is all down to Johnson Clark Harris now. A contract has been put on the table, rumoured to be over £10,000 a week, and including a goal bonus, which, let's be honest, there's a lot of money in League One and that's how 
big these owners know and how their intent, what their intentions are with Charlton Athletic. And I think it'll be interesting to see whether spending all that money is going to work. I personally don't know whether Johnson Clark Harris is the right route to go down. Obviously, we know he's a proven goal scorer at this level. That is obviously a no-brainer and he will probably score us quite a few goals. I just don't want him to end up flopping after spending that much money and then him just sitting on the wage bill or potentially getting injured at his age. You never know. I know he hasn't got um, a big injury um, record, but you, you never know when you're at Charlton Athletic. You know, you could be cursed straight away. So obviously, Johnson Clark Harris would be a fantastic signing. I discussed him a little bit more last week when the rumours were um, in full flow, but obviously a fee now has been agreed and it's all down to the personal terms and the player. I could see a little bit more of acceleration after Saturday when we play Posh, obviously. I don't think they want to sell him before then. Be interesting to see whether he's in the matchday squad tonight for Peterborough as well, but we'll have to wait and see until next week is what I think. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe and all that stuff. Let's aim for 25 likes on this video. We hit 50 likes on the last one, so I'm aiming for 25 this time. I aimed for like 10 on the last one. Pathetic from me, but I'm going with 25. If you can smash the like button, please, please, please do. Comment down below who's your dream signing of this transfer window. Obviously, be realistic. Is it Clark Harris? Is there someone else that you have your eye on? Potentially one that has gone a little bit under the radar in terms of rumours. Um, I also want to say a massive thank you for 900 subscribers. As I said, I want to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of February. So if you are new around here, please smash that like button and subscribe. And I will see you tonight for the live stream straight after the director's meeting. So make sure you're there.